Today I want to get started with a tweet that I sent out over the weekend regarding uh, the hypocritical, hypocritical mind of the, of the black man. He really is in deep trouble. He doesn't understand himself. Uh, black athletes, for instance, when you look at people like uh, this LeBron James guy, right? And, and you look at all the boycotts that are going on now. Well, not, well they're refusing to play uh, some games as a result of Jacob Blake. They're going to be very sorry they took that stance because they don't know who Jacob Blake is, but the George Floyd event. But these athletes that are now raising their clenched fists and t talking about Black Lives Matter, the truth of the matter is, is that they don't live around black people. They don't live in black neighborhoods. The moment they get enough money, the first thing they do is that they move out of the hood and they, they, they don't, they, and they go to, not Hollywood, but they go to the whitest, richest neighborhood that their money can buy. They buy the whitest neighborhood, they buy the whitest schools for their children that their money can buy. And yet they wanna talk about Black Lives Matter. When they, when they take the potential professional uh, if you will, trust out of the black community by living white. They live white. They try to talk black, but they live white. You know, the lawyers, the doctors, the athletes, the wealthy people, if they stayed within the black community and supported the black community, bought black, lived black, you know, built the black community rather than building white community. I mean, I've never seen anything as hypocritical as this. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it is, you don't see white basketball players, you know, that can play basketball. You don't see them moving to black neighborhoods. You know, it is the black man, he is in deep trouble. He's got a sausage brain cognitive tension problem. All these folk live in these wealthy, wealthy white neighborhoods, and then they want to try to talk about the black man and, and what ought to be happening. I mean, America, white Americans ought to be screaming from the top of their voices, y'all are nothing more than a bunch of pimps. You don't even want to live in your own neighborhood because you know how dangerous it is. You don't want to live around George Floyd. I'm telling you right now, I bet my seat in heaven that LeBron James don't want to live next to George Floyd, uh, Trayvon Martin, Jacob Blake, or none of the rest of them. And not even Rashonda, what are the girls is down in Louisa and in, 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 in Kentucky? LeBron James don't want to live next door to her. LeBron James don't want to live, don't want to live next door to George Floyd. I guarantee you, he ain't gonna let he and, and if George Floyd moved to his neighborhood, he would move. These there's a serious, there's a serious schizophrenic going on in the black community. Like I've never seen anything as as as, as demented as the black man's mind. Running around here talking about police treatment, and he does even worse. He does in Portland, Oregon on Saturday, there was a shooting of a 16-year-old gunned down in the park, black youth by other black youth. You don't know about it. You hear that about it? You ever heard a thing about it? You ever heard a thing about it? And LeBron James has not said anything about it. The very, I mean, you, you have got to absolutely, there is no way you can give any credit to anybody, any, any black man. You, you can't black people, black leaders. You can't give them any credit whatsoever when they can just pay no attention to a 16-year-old shot down at a park in Portland, Oregon, and they say not a word. But when Jacob Blake gets shot by the police, all of a sudden the world had to stop. Basketball games had to stop. Football games had to stop. I mean, you, you got, and, and again, always, every time you see this idiot, LeBron James, or any of them, Michael Jordan, any of them, they don't want to live around their own kind. They don't. They don't want to. Let me say something to you. The, uh, uh, the Spike Lee, right? Spike Lee. Uh, was raised up in a house that his father bought out on Clinton Avenue near DeKalb Avenue in a place called in Brooklyn called Fort Greene, right? And I don't know, it was a school teacher's father, somebody bought the house. He was raised up there, Spike Lee. Once that boy made some money, he moved out of Fort Greene. 
right, before the gentrification, he moved out of Fort Greene, bought himself a multi-million dollar house on the Upper West Side, just off of 8th Avenue in Central Park. A gazillion dollar mansion he bought, right? Rather than staying in the hood, rather than staying in Fort Greene, he moved to the white neighborhood. They all do it. I mean, how on earth can anybody black listen to these hypocrites? Talk about justice for black people when they themselves don't want to live around black people. And the reason why they don't want to live around black people is because they're scared as hell that some black man going to kill them, rob them, rape them. That's why they don't want to live around black folk. They move. And Fort Greene, by the way, now has been really upscaled greatly. You know, there's mansions right across the street. There's a mansion down on the right. As I, as if you see the, the, the back end of the, our vehicle, See that man walking? He's walking towards 122nd Street. Well, off in the corner back over there, you can barely see it, is a five-story mansion. It is a mansion. LeBron James could live there. That's a beautiful, it, it has fireplaces, ornate stairwells. It has a backyard. It, and, it's right, and it's in the hood. He don't want to live. LeBron James, none of these, none of these black folk with money want to live in their own land. What a bunch of hypocrites. I can't see how anybody can take them serious. And the reason why they don't want to live around black folk, because black folk will kill you. They'll rob you. Let me tell you something. That black LeBron James is just a, a, a suspect of being shot by a young 16-year-old black boy or a 35-year-old black man in the hood. <laughs> it don't make no difference. It don't. And and see, here's the thing that you 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 need to understand. You run around here talking about um, the police brutality, police police brutality, and and let me tell you something. The reason why Spike Lee, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and all of them don't want to live around black folk because black folk are dangerous. They're wild. They're animalistic. They will kill you. And they will destroy their own neighborhoods. They will kill you. So they move out. Soon they get enough money, they move out. But my question is this, or my statement is rather, is this then how can you blame the police for being afraid of black people when you are afraid of them? You can't blame the police for shooting first and asking questions later because the black man has a history of violence. He has a, listen, they tased Jacob Blake three times and he still didn't stop. He has a history of violence. So the police officer wants to go home, maybe not to a rich neighborhood like Mike, like uh, LeBron James, but he wants to go home to his wife. Black people would kill you, black men. They are like bulls, they, and you can't stop them. Listen, Harlem is a beautiful community, but no black athletes live in Harlem. <laughs> no black movie star live in Harlem. Don Lemon used to move, and he left. And, and that's because we don't have beautiful townhouses and gracious places to live. Oh, it's a beautiful place to live. Beautiful place to live. The problem is the black man on the street will kill you. That's why the police kill them. And the hypocrisy of Black Lives Matter, I swear I have, met, I have seen a lot of crazy things. You know, I saw people shoot, stab one another, and cut one another in prison for a bologna sandwich or one cigarette. So I figured that's pretty crazy, but you know, that's, that's how that is. And I thought nothing. When I saw the guy get stabbed over a bologna sandwich, I thought that took the cake. But I swear before my God, who I love greatly, when I look at people like LeBron James and Michael Jordan and Black Lives Matter defending people like George Floyd, and this Blake boy, or Trayvon Martin, or Michael Brown, or any of them against the police, when they know damn well the police is just as scared of these, these animalistic black people as they are. That's why they don't live around them. Yet, yet they think that nobody can see behind the scenes. They're out there like, oh, we're for the black man. Well, you're not for the black community. Oh, we're for the black man. We gotta have equal justice. And they spend all that billion, millions of dollars at, at, at white people's cleaners, at white schools, at white grocery stores. They don't spend it in the hood. Have you ever seen anything like this? 
They spent all that money with white folk and then talk about the injustice that the police and that, that Trump or others do to black people. Have you ever? They are the most, black folk are the most critical, unjust, unjust people toward their own kind than any white police who has ever shot anybody. It's not, it, 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 it. Can you move to Harlem? Hell no, I ain't moving. You got to wrap your mind. You know, I get up and talk on television about how I love, how injustice is. I'm going home. I want to go home to a safe number. I want to go home. LeBron James wants to go home to a neighborhood as white as his money can buy. The whiter it is, the, the more he wants to buy it. And so I think it needs to be said that they're going to kill more black young men <laughs> because now you've got these freaks out there giving them permission to, to, to march and get their name in some sort of a, if you will, list of men killed by police. It's, I don't know, and I say this as a man of God. I mean, let me say something to you. I've been touting my resume recently and uh, I, I want to do it one more time. Not the full joint, but I want to I wanna say something. I wake up in Harlem every morning. I go to sleep in Harlem every night, unless I'm on vacation or traveling. I, I live in a penthouse myself. I'll go ahead and say that. I do, I live in, a, live in this building. It's pretty nice, it's not bad. I have no complaints. I have no desire to move to Scarsdale. It's, it's Elizabeth and I, we have a nice place to stay. Right here. Right here. <laughs> right here. Even though I have to walk out on the street. Um, and um, others could do the same thing. If they loved their brothers, they would do as I do. And in our building, we sleep homeless people, you know. Yeah. I sleep in one room, and I have several rooms in Lisbon. I have, have a three-bedroom joint. Uh, but we also sleep homeless people in the same building that I have my sleeping space. Because I'm a sure enough brother. I'm not a, I'm not a sausage brain. I can think. I can see. I'm not a hater. You know, I am... Um, I, I'm real against LeBron James, people like Van Jones and all these Eddie Glods and Liz Grandison and all these freaks you see supporting Black Lives Matter. I'm the most substantial black man you could ever meet. You, you don't know one that is qualified as I am. You know, that Tim Cook said the other day to, that um, he was, um, Tim Scott, pardon me, Tim, Timothy Scott from uh, South Carolina, Senator from South Carolina said the other day, that he has moved from the cotton fields of South Carolina to the, uh, the Congress. And I, I, I think that if you don't know what it is to pick cotton, and not just the picking of the cotton, but the culture itself of, of picking cotton is, is, is slavery. It was the same as slavery. That's why John Lewis talked about it as part of his heritage. Picking cotton is the same as being a slave. It, there's no difference. And when you can evolve from picking cotton to the Congress, it is a major step. John Lewis, Tim Scott, and anybody who's had that experience will always reference it because most people have no idea of the culture of it, of what it meant, what it was like to do it, what the scorching sun was like. They have no idea, and it's very difficult to explain it to them. I did it. I did it for three, for 100 pounds of cotton. Now, cotton is very light. To get 100 pounds, they'd pay you $3. And all my family members, we all pick cotton. I want to say that. So in the event that you think that John Lewis is special, or Tim Scott. But unlike John Lewis, uh, what John Lewis and Tim Scott unlike me, I've also worked on the chain gang. I, James David Manning, the man you're looking at right now, worked on one of the last chain gangs in America up in Duval County, Florida, a union correctional facility, a place called Rayford, Florida. I worked on the chain gang. I actually went out with a bush axe 
and I went down into the weeds and the trenches and I cut the waterways with alligators and snakes. I have worked on the chain gang. Now, if you've never picked cotton, that's one thing. But if you've never worked on the chain gang, if you, you have no idea what it's like, oh, it's one thing to be in prison. That's a lot of people go to prison and, and have a better time in prison than they do on the street. I'm one of the last men in America that worked on one of the last chain gangs in America. Yet I've been to the White House and I've graduated from my Ivy League school. I've founded two schools and for the past 25 years, graduating students. I live in Harlem. I'm a global personality. That's right. I've done all those things that they have done, but nobody loves the black man. Nobody loves him, and nobody will tell him the truth. When you love people, you tell them the truth. Don't tell me LeBron James loves black folk, but he lives white. He's going to live as white as he can because he don't want to live around these animals called the black man or the black boys with their pants below their belt or the black man who's got so much hate in him. You can tase him three times with a taser. The police can tell him to stop, but he's got so much hate in him, even the tasing don't stop. That's why he needs to be shot in the ass seven times because you tased him three times and he didn't stop. He's got hate in him, anger in him like you ain't never seen. It's uncontainable. LeBron James don't want to live around that. Michael Jordan don't want to live around that. None of the rest of them. Liz Grandison, Van Jones said the other day, oh, my boy will never have the problem that these boys are having because we live in a safe neighborhood. It is, a, it, is a, it is a sickness beyond biblical proportion. And I see the black man. I've known him all my life. His sickness is beyond biblical proportions. It's beyond that. Years ago, when... People started running out of Harlem, running to white neighborhoods. White folks said, hey, they leaving all that beautiful property up there. They knew the property was beautiful. They knew that it was. But the problem was this, is that the mindset of the property owners was a sickness. I, I wanted to get my resume out. I wanted to be able to say that. I purposely brought this particular subject matter because you bring me anybody, you can go get me Doc, you can go get Dr. King, you can get Jesse Jackson, you can get Louis Farrakhan, and none of them can stand as tall as I. Now, I'm, you say, well, Pastor, you're tooting your own horn. You're damn right I am. you damn right, because the rest of them are hypocrites, always have been, always will be. But it's important that for you, when you get ready, you want to roll up on me as a man. You roll up on me, you better be able to do and stand where I've stood. If you can't stand in my shoe, then you roll up on me, you're making a big mistake. Anybody who makes a judgment about me, you don't know nothing about me. And you better not try to put in it, don't put LeBron James on. And besides, he can't play basketball. Listen, I could put Clyde Walt Frazier on him, Earl the Pearl of Monroe. Hell, I could put Bob Cousy on a Larry Bird on, on LeBron James and make Larry make uh, LeBron James look like he's suffering from, from paralysis or the polio. Boy, I can't play no damn basketball. So I, I'm, I want my resume out there. I'm one of the last men to work on a chain gang in America, and yet I have succeeded living in Harlem, broadcasting and talking to you with an eye of the league education backed up by Columbia University. No, you, you, you don't know another man that's done that. No, you don't know anybody else. I'm, I'm the Lord's servant. I'm the Lord's servant. And you understand something, why these boys are being shot by the police. They first get shot by Spike Lee and LeBron James and Michael Jordan, who desert them rather than living in the neighborhoods and Putting their in, letting the, letting the young black children see LeBron James on the streets of Harlem every day. Or Michael Jordan. Somebody to look up to. Spending their money with the local businesses. Going to the local churches. They, they are the first ones that assassinate the black community. LeBron James is the biggest, well he may not be the biggest assassinator, but you get the idea. They've killed more black 
boys than the police could ever kill if they were started shooting today and then stop till Jesus returned. What black people have done killing each other. I've never, I've never seen anything as decrepit as the black man's brain. No wonder he was in Africa for 10,000 years and never built a damn thing. But I'm here. And we're going to build the Middle Passage. You haven't heard Michael Jordan say anything about that. You haven't heard LeBron James make any contribution to that. But we're going to do it. No, we're going to do it. No, we're going to get that done. Why? Because it honors the black people that died in the Middle Passage. It honors them. It honors their legacy, their memory. Michael Jordan's not interested in that. LeBron James, Spike Lee, Liz Granson, Eddie Glaude, they're not interested in this, building a monument in Harlem. Now, if you say we'll build one in the white neighborhood, well, hell, because these boys white. They love to live white. They buy white. They live white. If they can get a white wife, that's the first thing they want to do is get that too. But no. Why is it that I'm the only brother that has ever thought about memorializing all those that died in the Middle Passage? We've been, been free for 150 years, been in Harlem, and none of these so-called black leaders have thought about memorializing those that died in the Middle Passage. Yet, they memorialized George Floyd, a pimp, small time, pimp. You know, you white folk out there, JV people, I give y'all a lot of credit. I give y'all a lot of credit that you still let a black man work for you. <laughs> I give you a lot of credit that you put up with him every day. I give you a lot of credit. Boy, you got some patience. You, got, you must know Jesus, some of y'all. You got to know Jesus to let these black folk work for you. You must know Jesus. You got to. There ain't, no way you, there ain't no way you could tolerate who they are without knowing. The Lord has sent me to wake him up. Uh, this is truth. And I'm a John 8.32 man. You don't like what I said. I know it. You don't like it. It's all right. You don't have to like it. I didn't expect you to like it. I want you to feel the pain of it. I want you to feel the sting of it. But there ain't no damn way you can run. There ain't no way you can hide. There ain't no way you can hide from this truth. You can run, but you can't hide from what I'm saying. I'm John 8, 32. But I've come to set you free. And the police, if the police shooting is going to stop, if the freedom is going to ever be enjoined, or ever enjoyed, it's going to be because God has sent me to love you enough to tell you the truth. God has sent me to you, black man. He sent me to you to tell you who you are, give you identity, and let you know that you need a healing in the brain, a healing in the heart, and a healing in the spirit. And the truth is the medicine you need to heal you. And that, my friend, not the civil rights movement, not Dr. King, not Louis Farrakhan, not marching on Washington, but it's the truth that will make you free, and that's my job. I'm asking for your prayers. Those of you who know the worth of it, pray for me. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. Now, before I go, before I go today, I wish to uh, announce and launch the uh, Lord's Servant logo that has been put together by my son. Well, he's my son in the church. The young man, 14, 15 years of age, he's put together a logo that represents my spirit 100%. Um, and we want to launch this today. And the name of this logo is called um, the, um, the Lord's Servant. I am the Lord's Servant. And there I stand. And that's my spirit, the spirit of a lion. I'm the Lord's Servant. Not as good as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The young man that put this together, his name, his name Israel Lewis. He's a, a usually gifted young man. God's brought him to work alongside me as we do this tremendous work of setting the black man free. Right now he's in chains by Spike Lee and a bunch of others. 
The Lord Servant, that's me. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon. Uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly, sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the Word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I'm he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.